had a viewer um, who asked a great question about sitting down posture when you're playing the violin and um, especially pertaining to um, how do you avoid hitting this leg right uh, while you're bowing with your bow. I thought um, it would be good to discuss sitting posture anyways in general so I'll try to answer the leg question first. So the main time we would be concerned about you know hitting the right leg with our bow is when we're on the E string. So anytime you're going to play on the E string and you're going to approach the tip, that's when we would be concerned. Playing on the A string, D string, there's really no danger there. And playing on the G string, there is a bit of a danger there. You can see my tip is way over there. And so if you have objects around you or people around you, like um, I often hear my students um, tell me how crowded it is in their orchestra class or in their, you know, or in their symphony that they're a part of. So um, even learning how to, you know, situate yourself properly when there's not much room because we don't want to be compromising our posture. There are times, you know, like I've played in, um, you know, pit orchestras many times for ballet, for opera. Even though you're, you know, you may even be a really high level player, you're still subject to certain you know, environmental, um, you know, stresses. So we do have to consider these things. The way that I'm sitting is just everything's very, very straight. You know, my, my legs are straight, knees, hips, shoulders, right? Everything is just straight. And at this point, I can almost get away with getting to my tip, you know? So in my case, what I've seen some people do is they just arch their back a little bit and see how the violin goes a little bit away and then you don't you're kind of using your body to finish your down bow okay so that's one way or you can just get your hand and your bow right between your your knees okay or your legs now i have a long torso so i'm probably able to get away with quite a bit but i can imagine if you're if you're more petite and you have a you know longer legs and shorter torso then you might have some issues so there are a lot of physiological concerns that are unique to each person um, so uh, one other thing you could do is right when you're about to get to the tip you could just slightly turn okay so you just bring your um, you know twist from the waist or you could even just bring your violin in but that could create all kinds of <laughs> problems now I would um, I would say you can try out any of the things that I suggest but you know main thing here I would say is for me I have actually st stood and sat in many positions and it doesn't affect my posture because I have practiced my posture for so many years I value it so much that I don't let anything get in the way so even if I'm temporarily crossing my legs while I play right let's say you're you know at your friend's home and you're just playing reading through string quartets or something I might I might do that temporarily or while I'm tuning or something and then temporarily and then go back to um, go back to the normal sitting position. So, you know, sometimes our back gets tired or our legs get tired and, you know, we want to change things around, but that's not going to make me have bad posture. Now, especially if you're young, especially if you um, tend to have some, you know, bad habits you're working on, uh, what I typically see in schools, especially public schools, is that the kids sit, you know, kind of um, out towards the front of the chair and then they, they, they lean back and they're hunching and then they play with their violin in the front and then they're you know it's horrible <laughs> it's horrible but just imagine um you know uh you know some degree of this version right and you see a lot of that so what happens is when i um see them at lesson they're standing for me but i can tell that they were sitting like this right during the duration you know, of their orchestra class or even maybe in their personal practice. So I really can pick up on it. <laughs> like I can almost like, you know, see what happened during the week because I see the fruit of it, you know. So one week later, whatever they've been doing day after day after day, it starts to show up. So just keep that in mind. Um, so um, it depends on what chair there is. Um, some chairs like are really horrible when you go out into public and you have a group, you know, like a orchestra or something. And the only chair is the chair that belongs to the hall you're at. And you could be at a hall that you've never been to 
and they take out these folding chairs that actually tilt. So, you know, the front of the seat is higher, the back is lower, and, and it just makes you have a really, really bad posture. So uh, you have to kind of adapt to the chair. And if you're wearing pants or if you're wearing a skirt that's more loose, you could just open your legs a tiny bit, right? And in, usually in this case, you can get your bow, but just right between the legs, okay? So that's one option. Um, another option I see quite a lot is to sit to the, to the right side. So I'm still sitting straight, but I'm not even using this this part of the chair I just use using the right side of the chair and you could sit like that and then what you do is you just drop drop this leg like that okay so you can kind of bring this side down your your bottom's still on the chair but your right leg has room to kind of kind of drop down so in this case it's, it's great because nothing's really you know really bothering you can go all the way I realized I better do a quick outfit change. I had just run in the door. This might be a little bit better so you can see the front view now. And so the first way was, was like this. All right, so that the, uh, my, my bow is about to touch the leg right there. So if I just do this, all right, that's going to be um, the way I clear my leg. Okay, and then the second way is the twisting way where I just slightly twist from the rib, um, from the waist. You can tell that normally I should be like, like this, right? But instead I'm a little bit like this. This does get tiring, it's not really good because we usually want to keep everything aligned, right? And then, um, and then the other way would be to just open your knees a little bit, right? Right, you're just, just right there, right? If you need to open more, that's, that's fine, okay? And then um, the other way was to scoot to the to right side of the chair. We see how I'm not using this side at all. And then you just, you just drop this leg. So you can just drop it back there. And then you could even kind of brace it. So now I feel like I have a little bit of support to push a little bit on this side, right? So I don't feel so like I'm gonna fall over if I really reach over this way. I have some, some support over there. This side, I feel like I could a little bit lose my balance, but it's okay. But I, at least I feel like a little bit more spread out. See how my feet are farther apart. All right, so then this, this way. You might hit the, hit the chair, but in that case, you could just scoot up. Okay, so do you see how there's plenty of room there? Um, I have seen, especially like if we're, if you're a lady wearing heels, then what happens is obviously our, our knees go up because the heel is, is so, so tall. I've seen several very famous women do this when they're, um, you know, sitting in like a string trio or a piano trio or string quartet and their legs are up, so <laughs> the entire time they're, they're playing, you know, twisted like this. Obviously a way is to just twist your body, but I think the best way is to try to achieve some sort of balance. So that's why I showed you the, um, the side view first, because um, you have several options. You know, you could sit with your bottom on the edge of the chair, which is the way that I would recommend. And this is also great because <clears throat> then actually you can just drop this leg completely. So I'll show you this also from the side view. But um, I like this, I typically play, you know, a lot like this, or I'll play like this with my legs a little bit, a little bit apart. I'll also stagger my feet, so I'll have one foot in front of the other and or switch. So I'll show you that one from the side view again. Do you see how this is just basically, um, I'm not leaning all the way back to the back of the chair, I'm just, um, <clears throat> putting my um, legs kind of where the end of the chair is. This is kind of as far as I, I go without really pushing it, right? And then, um, but if you scoot to the, to the front of the chair, I really like this. This is really the, the best way that I feel most like myself. Like if I were to, you know, play standing up, then I feel like my back has a lot of strength and support and it's quite straight this way. Um, so in this case, what I would do is I would just actually just drop 
this leg and that achieves the same thing. I can still sit in the middle of my chair, right? But I can still, you know, get to, I can even put my foot way, way back there. So you see how there's no chance that my um, bow will reach. <clears throat> so that's also one way that's great. Or you could do the same thing with a little bit more of the leg on the outside of the chair. So that's, um, so that's another option. Now I'm gonna grab another chair that's a lot smaller. This is a quite a large chair. So this is my uh, outdoor folding chair. And <clears throat> I think it's a little bit more similar to something that kids might be using in school or you might be using if you're out at a public concert or something. Sometimes it's nice to sit with your bottom all the way back, right? So that your the lower back has some support, but I usually don't use the upper back unless it's like a really, you know, like this, this thing, unless it's a pretty good supportive chair or if it's like a three hour long opera concert that I have to play you know, something like that. So um, generally I keep my back, my upper back off, you know, off of the chair. And then, you know, I usually, I'm not very good at sitting still, so I'm often just gonna be changing my position. So, so here, what you could do is just, um, you know, you might, if you're like the person who's on the right side of the stand, right? So then you might be looking more this way, right? So if you're slightly looking this way anyway, you might get away with having your, your hand in between your legs like this, okay? So this might be a you know, nice, comfortable way for me. Now my stand would not be directly in front of me here. My stand would actually be to the left, okay? So I might go ahead and segue into that portion of it. Okay, so do you see the setup here, how I'm sitting again more at the edge of my chair and um, I have my right leg dropped, right? I have my knees a little bit open and um, my shoulders are all straight to see my chair was directly towards you i'm i'm looking straight at you my shoulders are square to you but my stand is on the left a lot of people get this wrong they think that the stand needs to be like you know like when you're at school on a you know at a desk or something the desk needs to be right in front this is not correct so sitting posture um you know, uh, when, when you really mean business, it's better to be in the front of the chair. Sometimes we need to really see the music or we need to turn the page. So we wanna be a little bit more in the front with our weight kind of going forward, right? So to see how in this case, how I'm, how I'm doing, this is probably how I would be practicing. about you know what you would do if you had all the room you know in the world like standing up how would you normally set yourself up and try to recreate that you know when you're sitting so um, if there are any more questions please leave comments below and I'll try to um, cover more things in a, in a future video